So uh, as I said, I'm Philip Rothman. This is the Scoring Express uh, webinar. Uh, I would also like to recognize uh, Joseph Treffler, who is with us once again. Uh, he is primarily responsible for those wonderful uh, theater and studio templates uh, that many of you are enjoying. And um, what the way this is going to work today is basically the purpose of the uh, session is to, for those of you that are already using Scoring Express, uh, the series of templates for uh, Sibelius, Thank you very much, and uh, I really appreciate uh, that you are using it. Hopefully, help you get a little bit more out of it um, and show you a little bit more how it works. For those of you that are curious that uh, aren't using it yet, um, maybe this will compel you to be a Scoring Express user at the end of the session today. Uh, but whatever the purpose, uh, hope you have some fun. Uh, I think it's going to be a fun hour. Uh, so the way it's going to work is that uh, I will just do a very, very brief kind of refresher of what Scoring Express is. I know some of you may already know this. Uh, it'll be similar to what I showed last time, but I think it's always helpful for those that aren't familiar with it, uh, what, what it is. Uh, and then I'm going to go uh, into some of those really cool new uh, features, just to touch on those that we introduced a couple of weeks ago. So those of you that we're early adopters. Uh, some of the new features that we rolled out, um, I'll show you what those look like. And then um, the next set part of it will be going a little bit more into the chamber uh, templates. Uh, I know last time we touched on more on the theater and studio side and jazz side. Don't wanna forget our friends who write more uh, concert music and uh, talk to you about what those look like. And then also how, even if you you know, aren't writing chamber music if you're writing like orchestral music or ensemble music that doesn't neatly fit into like a trio or a quartet or a quintet, uh, how you can still get a lot of uh, use out of the templates, whether they be the chamber look or the jazz look, the theater look, depending on what you're doing. So I'll touch on that. Hopefully, if I'm not too loquacious, uh, we will leave a good amount of time for Q&A this time, um, aiming for about half an hour or so. And, um, and so what I, would, uh, what I would like is that uh, those of you who are already in the chat, hello, everybody. Nice to see so many uh, nice people from all over the world. It's amazing. Um, Joseph is going to monitor the chat. And if you have any questions, please, by all means, um, while I'm talking, feel free to put something in there. Uh, he will address any questions to the extent possible. Uh, but keep in mind, uh, we'll try to do a little bit more of an interactive Q&A um, on the second half of the session, you can raise your hand using the Zoom. We'll, we'll do our best to monitor all that and answer as many questions as we can. Uh, Joseph, I would ask, uh, feel free to interrupt me at any time, you know, just barge in if I go too far afield or if I say something that isn't correct, by all means. Oh, let, me, uh, let, me un let me unmute you there. I will do that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. Don't be shy. All right. Well, great. Well, let's let's get started here. I'm going to share my screen and um, let's get going. Uh, and I also, those of you, I uh, got a little feedback. Whoops, got a little feedback from uh, people that they couldn't see. The screen was kind of small, so I increased the resolution there. So hopefully, that is helping people. Kind of see things a little bit more than uh, than last time. Okay, so what is uh, Scoring Express? It is basically it's a collection of templates, manuscript papers, house styles, and high quality music and text fonts for Sibelius. These are the same templates that I use at NYC Music Services. Uh, I want you to know that um, you know I have some other templates that I I use as well. Um, but these are the ones primarily now that I've been using for really years and kind of refining over time. Uh, you know, if you read the Scoring Notes blog, I, you know, documented a lot of tips and tricks about how to use Sibelius, and I've just incorporated them into these templates, of course, with the input of other people like Joseph, uh, like other people, uh, Bernie uh, Constantino, who developed the wonderful uh, angled slash chord symbol fonts and, and others. And so I decided to make this available for a lot of people to, uh, to use. And so um, that's what Scoring Express is. It's one installer, one installer package. And what do you get uh, in Scoring Express? You get the fonts, basically, uh, Norfolk and Pori fonts. These are 
high quality music tech, uh, music uh, fonts that are expressly designed to work with Sibelius. Uh, it's not a trivial thing to, to design a Sibelius compatible suite of fonts. Uh, these are based on the Bravura and the, uh, Pet uh, the Petaluma uh, fonts that Dorico uses, respectively. And the reason we're able to make them work in Sibelius is because they're licensed, as all these fonts are, under an open source font license, open font license. And uh, the reason for that is so that even if somebody doesn't have Scoring Express and you want to share your Sibelius file with them, you can 100% legally share your file and share those fonts with everybody else uh, as well. And the nice thing about that is, um, whoops, got the chat up there. Sorry about that. Uh, the nice thing is that you don't have to be kind of locked into the Scoring Express and then somebody says, oh, wait a second, I don't have the Norfolk font or whatever. They can, you know, you can share it with them. They can download the Norfolk and Pori fonts independently from Notation Central if, uh, if they need to. So we just really wanted to make it so that, you know, you can use this and not worry about necessarily kind of keeping it on your one computer. Uh, obviously, if your colleague is going to uh, use uh, these files, we encourage them to download and install and purchase Scoring Express so they get the full benefit of the templates and, and all those other settings. But the fonts themselves, you are allowed to freely distribute them uh, if you need to. And I want to make that very clear. Um, so you, obviously you see those beautiful angled slash chord symbol fonts. Again, Bernie Costantino and others uh, responsible, Jeff Kellum, uh, another one uh, who really had a huge hand in making those look so nice. Those are exclusive to the Norfolk and Pori fonts. You won't find them anywhere else. It is a beast to get those to work correctly and they just work beautifully in Sibelius. Um, okay, so in terms of what actually comes with uh, Scoring Express, uh, you get, of course, the templates and in each uh, installer, but depending on the chamber or jazz or theater, there are at least nine different um, templates. And you can see like, for instance, the chamber, you get the duo, the piano, quartet, quintet, solo, etc. Jazz, you get some big band, lead sheet, song, theater, you have everything from pit orchestra to rock band, landscape and portrait formats, expanded rock band. And so you get all of those uh, templates, but you don't just get the templates. You also get manuscript papers. And what does that look like in Sibelius? That means that if you open up a quick start dialog, as soon as you run the installer and then open up Sibelius again, you'll find the templates, uh, sorry, the manuscript papers rather, corresponding to all those templates that I just showed you. So that means that if you want to just start a score from one of these templates, you can start it in your you know, quick start dialogue the same way you always do. And you know, you'll be able to basically start right from that scoring express look right away. So that's really neat. So you can work that way. And uh, the other thing that uh, we include are house styles uh, corresponding to every single uh, template. And I'll get into that uh, more in just a minute, but basically what that means that if you are essentially kind of working with, with the, uh, you know, a Sibelius stock uh, quartet, let's say, and you want to import um, a house style into that, you go to appearance, import, and you'll see here SE, depending on whether it's chamber, jazz, or theater, you know, you'll see one house style corresponding to every single template that we include, as well as part house styles. And I'll show how to use those a little bit later uh, in the session today. So that's what comes with it. You get a nice suite of plugins. These are all freely distributable independently, of course, from the Sibelius site, but we want to make it as easy as possible for you to just get using them right away. Bob Zawalk is the author of those, and they work very comp in a very complimentary way to Scoring Express. And we also try to include at least one or more example files per uh, package. And uh, you'll see, uh, and for instance, Joseph uh, Tef uh, Treffler's uh, examples that he put together really, really nicely. And you can poke around those and see how he formatted his files and some of the other uh, files. So you can really get a sense of how they work and kind of do a little bit of digging and exploring on your own. So that's a nice uh, little bonus as well. And of course, look, there's so many features. I'm not going to go into all of them, but you can just see here 
uh, already. There's a lot of custom trill lines and octave lines. We added some more octave lines in this very most recent update, which is kind of neat. A lot more extra pedal lines and oh, so much, so much good stuff. I love it. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, it gets you working. These are the things really. Let's let's be honest. Sibelius. It'd be nice if Sibelius included in some of their own default templates. But we did the work. We put it together and made it made it work in Scoring Express. So. Um, and that way you don't have to spend precious time creating those uh, from scratch. There's one installer. I won't go through the process of installing it. It's a basically a Windows or a Mac installer. But the one thing that you just should be aware of is uh, if you do get a message that says it's an uh, un unidentified developer, of course, uh, I'm identifying myself. Um, it's just we're not part of the Apple official development. Uh, series of, of certification processes that you have to go through. And perhaps eventually I'll take the time to do that. But suffice it to say, there's nothing executable in any of these files. You can't control your computer. These are just documents. They're libraries. They are uh, other files that can't you can't do anything with other than just open them and use them. So they can't control your computer in a way a program can. So there's really no nothing to worry about there. So go ahead, run the installer. Follow the directions if you get this message. It's not a problem at all. And then look, how to run it, how to use it, how to get it. ScoringExpress.com goes right to our Notation Central site. You can buy each of the suites independently, or you can buy the bundle. I think it's about a 20% discount off of the a la carte prices. So that's kind of a nice uh, discount if you are interested in getting all three at once. So look, that's Scoring Express. Let's get right into some of those nice updates that I showed you real quickly before I show you how to use the chamber uh, settings. And let me get, let me find the file that I want to show you, which is this one right here. So look, in the most recent Scoring Express update, I think the biggest thing that we um, did was finally sort out that bar number conundrum. And what do I mean by that? We're talking about a situation in a part where the, the best that we could possibly do is really kind of make the bar numbers uh, be as close as possible to the staff. But look, at the end of the day, you would have to kind of drag these into place. And oh, you know what I'm talking about if you've had to do this in a lot of parts, especially in theater parts, film music parts, where it is conventional to show the bar number on every bar. And there's there's a good reason for it. If you want, you can read my dissertation on scoring notes uh, about kind of the theory of it and what the issue was. So that's a little bit more you know, for further reading if uh, you wanna get into it. Suffice it to say, this is what it looked like in Scoring Express before. It wasn't bad, but like I said, you had to drag those into place. Just for context, you may find if you set this up on your own without a Scoring Ex Express uh, template, they probably look more like this. It's probably this setting is on. And what's happening is Sibelius is like going overboard with magnetic layout. And it's not only, you know, it is avoiding these items like ties and other things, but it's also grouping all these bar numbers together. And really, I mean, it's, it's kind of comical what happens because you get kind of these compound effects where not only is it trying to keep these bar numbers aligned, but then that something like this Sforzando, for instance, is way away from, from the staff. So like I said, the best that option that we were able to do was to get something that, um, you know, kind of split the difference. But finally, we finally found good settings that made this really automatic. Now, in the most recent update that we released a couple of weeks ago, this is all included in the templates. It's all in the house style. You start from it, you import a house style, you work with the template, it's all there. If you do happen to, or if you are uh, using an existing Scoring Express file and you want to just take advantage of this feature, probably the safest thing to do that I would say, unless you want to inspect those, those settings and kind of adjust them manually, what I would recommend doing is going to appearance. You have to do this in the score because magnetic layout is only importable via the score, even though it affects the parts as well. And go to appearance, uh, import, and find the, uh, the Scoring Express house style that suits your file most closely, at least. This one happens to be the MT Expanded Rock Band and Strings template. And what I wanna do, I'm gonna actually gonna uncheck 
all this other stuff. So I'm not going to get some of the other benefits, but let's say I just care about those bar number settings for now. I'm going to import those magnetic layout settings and click OK. Nothing happened in the, in the score, but now if I go back to that part, you'll see everything is just as it should be. Like all these bar number settings are automatic, finally, you know, and I can kind of prove it to you by if I filter just the bar numbers, you can, if we zoom in real closely, you can kind of see all the ways in which Sibelius very, very subtly and sometimes obviously is uh, dealing with those bar numbers. It's scooting the bar number just to the left of the clef a little bit. It's moving it from the tie. Anything that doesn't need moving, it leaves exactly in place like that, uh, 111. And look, this is a real big improvement for those of you that have to bang out these parts super quickly. I can't tell you, you know, the amount of time I've spent tweaking these and you always miss one. You just always do inevitably anytime you have to do it manually. So this is a big change. Um, I know it's kind of obsessive to deal with this stuff, but look, the whole point of scoring express templates is that we're obsessive. So, so you don't have to be. Um, so that was a, a nice feature. It was a nice update. A couple other things real quickly in the latest update. Uh, one was these, uh, speaking of being obsessive about these, um, these lines. And these are the new uh, octave lines. And before we just had the four um, octave up and octave down, just for context, what that looks like in a, you know, maybe open up a default uh, Sibelius file. They don't look that great. And they are just these four octave up, 8VB, not to get too into it, but is kind of an, in, you know, it's, it's incorrect uh, language. There's no such thing as really 8VB. Search the forums. You can uh, find out all sorts of discussions about it. But basically, what am I trying to get at? If you follow like Elaine Gould's rules, that line has to be flush bottom. The text has to be flush bottom uh, with, the, with the line. That's what we're going for. And finally, we figured out a way to do that. And it, it just, it looks nice. So if I put in an octave line, I'm just gonna quick, uh, click a random thing here. This is what the scoring express default is like, which is just the eight. I think I, I like that kind of, that's a real nice clean look um, as far as I'm concerned. But if you like the uh, octave uh, up uh, with the eight VA there, we have that as well. We have the eight VB. Uh, which is actual or 8BA really, which is the um, you know more preferred uh, way of of, of uh, showing it. So no, that's that wasn't trivial to set up, but it's just all there. You don't have to think about it. Same for the two octave lines. By the way, um, if you're using the 2021.2 update, okay, check out command search. It's actually really cool. Uh, like if I wanted to put in an octave line, you know, let's just say here. I'm, I, all I need to do is hit command, uh, comma rather, the comma, you can kind of think as the comma invoking command. And I can start just typing octave, if you can see that uh, in, on your screen. And you get all the different octave lines and you don't actually have to go to the lines gallery. And that's a nice way of finding what you're looking for. So if you want like that octave up alt line. Anyway, so something to think about. Uh, uh, let me know sometimes that um, that chat window uh, obscures that upper right hand corner of the screen. So Joseph or someone just uh, interrupt me if you can't see that command search area. But hopefully you saw what I, sh I showed you there. And that where, let me, I'll show another example. This is kind of the other uh, update that we uh, included. And you've seen this before sometimes. Um, a grand pause over a, uh, a full stack rest. And I'm just going to hit the, you know, the comma, start typing GP, and I've got two new lines there, a staff one and a system one. And I just, this is the, this is the staff one if I wanted to apply it on a staff. If I wanted to uh, show it on a system, I would just do that. And what does that do? That is, a, it's actually behind the scenes. You can actually see real faintly there that it's a line. And that makes sure that that GP always stays perfectly locked and centered uh, on the bar. Now, by the way, we usually see this on a Fermata, right? Again, nothing to do with Scoring Express necessarily. I'm just going to use the command search and start typing Fermata. That is actually a lot quicker than you know hitting the keypad and like finding the Fermata and all that stuff. So, I don't know. I'm using I'm using um, command search uh, a lot more. This is not again not a Scoring Express feature, but if you start uh, putting it into your workflow, you find you get 
quick uh, with it pretty fast. You can do comma, you can do a, a three, four, you can put in a time signature just like that. I didn't have to go to the time signature. I didn't have to hit T for time signature. I didn't do anything like that. If I want to put in a D flat major key signature, I just do that. Obviously, you know, the line got kind of shifted because it was a three, four bar, but you just kind of drag it into place and it, and it works again. So anyway, there's a little side 2021.2 Sibelius nerditry there, but um, it works. The point is it works really well with all the built-in features we have with Scoring Express. All right, so those are the basic updates in Scoring Express. I wanna go into a little bit the, um, the chamber side of things as I, as I promised. And this is how uh, Scoring Express is basically designed to work. You can get at it from a couple of different ways. So I am going to open up, remember I showed you those uh, kind of template files that come with uh, Scoring Express uh, just a moment ago. So let's open up um, that uh, chamber. I'm going to open up a quartet file. And what I would recommend that you do if you start from these, these live in your scores, your documents slash scores folder and you know, Scoring Express. What I would recommend that you do is that you kind of, if you're going to start from a Scoring Express template file, Sibelius file, drag it to your desktop, make a copy or make a copy of it, drag it to your, you know, desktop or wherever, so that you don't, you know, lose these core files. If you do happen to overwrite it, it's no big deal. You can always run the installer again, and they will pop up. But what I always like to do is make a copy of it, put it in my project folder, what have you, and then. Uh, I can start working from there. So I'm going to open up this file. This is like your blank slate scoring express file, one bar, all the settings are there. There's no music. A couple of things. If you are writing a string quartet, you can just start writing music into this. It's that simple, just like any other Sibelius file, right? If you want to import an existing file, uh, this is what you do. And I'm going to use, with permission, um, a composer, and I think he may be on the, um, the uh, webinar today. So if you are Patrick Pellissier, uh, hello, Patrick. Uh, he's uh, written some beautiful uh, string quartet music, and he's allowed me to show you uh, how this works with the Scoring Express file. So I'm just going to open up his, this is kind of his default uh, score. You actually don't need to have the source file open, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like uh, so you can get a sense of what it looks like. Now look, the, we're using kind of Sibelius standard fonts, Opus, all that. Obviously there's some layout issues going on and formatting and all these things. These are the things that uh, Scoring Express is designed to, um, to remedy um, when you work with it. So let's see what we can do with it. I'm going to just kind of put it off to the side here and I'm gonna have my template file off to the right. And I wanna open up File, Import, and all I need to do is drag that file over. I can also locate it you know, on the file browser. I'm just going to drag it over. And what happens here? A few things. Uh, Sibelius, if you click Auto Assign, it's going to do its darndest to match up the names of the instruments with what is in your template. And it got most of it right. This happens sometimes if you have a you know, violin two, and you use Roman numerals, and you're using Arabic numerals for the template. It, long story short, it imported the violin two part into the violin one. And if you can see that, it actually it's doing, it's trying to implode them into one part. Obviously, we don't want that, so we're going to uh, click on violin one, uncheck it, check violin two, and now everything is importing. And what's happening here? It's not only importing like the music, the notes, the rhythms, etc. It's importing time signatures, key signatures, tempo markings, global markings. The, all that stuff is coming along for the ride. So basically, the structure. If you ever used um, impose sketch onto template, Sibelius, as as uh, recently as the 2020.12 update. You can do this with native Sibelius files. You can also do it with music XML files. You can do it with MIDI files. Obviously with those, you're not gonna get quite the one-to-one -one Sibelius relationship, but you will get a lot of that same information. You will get time signatures, you'll get key signatures. And so look, what I wanna make sure that happens is I don't wanna import the house style, obviously, because I wanna use the Scoring Express house style. 
Same thing with the document setup. In this case, I want to use the settings in my template. So let's click, let's click import. And you can see right away, we've got, this is default. I haven't changed a thing here. You can start to see how good this, this score is looking. And because it's inheriting all the Scoring Express templates, uh, template settings rather, uh, compared to the source score. Again, look, the music itself is really great music. We want to make the make it look as good as it sounds. So that's what we do with Scoring Express. Uh, some tidying up that I would recommend that you do in order to get the full benefit. And you may decide, you know, you may decide to do this uh, depending on your score if you want to adjust these settings. Um, the first thing I would do is transfer. If you've got uh, in the backstage, if you've got your metadata already set up as you like it, um, there's a plugin that comes with Scoring Express, and it's called Transfer Score. Whoops, Transfer Score Info, and it basically just says, "Okay, let's take the source score, load the score info, say OK, click to the destination score, let's run that plugin again. This saves you the tedium of having to copy and paste all this information." and then transfer save score info. And just like that, that metadata, the, in this case, the title, the composer name, the copyright, all showed up. I don't have a subtitle for this piece, so I could actually just delete that, or I could delete it here and save it for later in case I decide to add one. Your choice. I would do probably that process so I don't actually delete that, um, that, uh, that text object. It's not going to hurt anything by having it live there. And then the other thing I would do is run a plugin. Again, this comes with Scoring Express called Reset Score, a Reset Spacing rather in Score and Parts. I'm just going to run Reset Spacing in Score and Parts. And despite its name, it doesn't just reset the spacing; it also resets the design, resets the positioning. So you really get the full benefit of the default settings. This is if you are not precious about your original file settings. You just say, you know what? I just want to blow everything back to Scoring Express defaults and start from there. So uh, in this case, I'm going to say do it on the full score and the dynamic parts and hit the button. And you can see it's just kind of cycling through the parts. You didn't see a whole lot happen there, except for the fact that you know maybe a few things popped into place a little bit better. The positioning was already pretty good. But just look, it is looking so much better. Obviously, you're going to want to tweak things a little bit. Maybe do some fine tuning on the layout. Maybe you want this to start it on, new, on a new system break, that sort of stuff. But in the main, you can see how good this is looking. And of course, if I go to the part, this is kind of where the, the proof in the pudding is. Uh, you see the, the benefit of the Scoring Express templates versus, let's say, the Sibelius. You know, this is what the part was looking like uh, in the source file. Of course, no work was done on it, but some weird page size stuff going on here. And formatting is just kind of, you know, obviously you wouldn't put this on the stands. And, you know, you could probably put this on the stands maybe with a handful of adjusting for page breaks and so on, but it is basically there and it looks really good. The spacing is nice, the fonts are nice. And you can just, you can either do these manually or you can, if you want to be a little bit more automated about it, there are, different settings, like in layout breaks, you can say, um, you know, uh, you could, if you wanted to say, use auto system breaks on rehearsal marks. So you could make that if you wanted to have Sibelius do a little bit of the heavy lifting for you. But you can just start seeing, like as I start just manually applying these system breaks, Sibelius is basically taking care of everything else with those nice settings. And then the final thing that I would probably do is is run that plugin position rehearsal marks, which actually got a big update in the latest Scoring Express template update. And so I'm just going to run it and let's say position rehearsal marks. And you can run it on the active part. You can run it on all the parts. The big news on this update is that if you run it on the score, it won't affect the parts and vice versa. There are also some additional settings like dealing with centering it on a double bar line and some other things. There's documentation included. It's, there's a lot of stuff going on. But even if I just kind of hit the defaults, you can kind of see already it, it moved all those rehearsal marks, those that are actually starting at the beginning of the system, uh, more or less aligned with the, the, you know, the left bar line there. So that's a real nice setting. Again, before, this is what they looked like. They were kind of offset. They were getting in the way of some other things. But uh, running that plugin, 
of course, does uh, does wonders automatically. So, you know, that's the the chamber stuff. Um, the other, the one other thing that I want to show, and this is uh, again, people have asked, you know, are there orchestral templates uh, yet? And there aren't. And and the reason for that, well, let me maybe actually I'll, I'll show you actually why that is. I'll demonstrate how to get a lot out of the Scoring Express templates still using a uh, uh, orchestral file. And so let me close. And by the way, you know, we will leave some time for questions, so we can always revisit that particular file later. But this here, I have a, a massive uh, score here. This is a uh, score and parts, and you can even see it took a, a little while to load, even on my pretty fast Mac. Now, you can kind of see, you can kind of start understanding why we haven't, I haven't gone down the road of creating orchestral templates yet is because with it, it, the challenge is how do you deal with the issue of sorting out you know, when you have instruments on more than, you know, more than one instrument on the same staff, flute and one and flute one and two on the same staff, for instance, uh, horn one and two on the same staff. There are various ways of dealing with this, dealing with a score file, a part file. I've talked about this on the blog. If you do this sort of work with any regularity and, and you know what I'm talking about. And so I didn't want to like put into a template a kind of a prescribed way of doing it if you don't actually work that way. Now, in time, it's possible that we will sort that out and I'll put something out. I also want to see the, where Sibelius evolves, quite honestly, in this way. They've already introduced some things with the focus on staves feature and some other improvements. So we'll see if they have a you know, more automatic way of sorting this out, maybe we can incorporate that into an eventual Scoring Express orchestral template. But even if you... Um, you know, even without that, you know, you have just the chamber templates. I just want to show you the benefit that you can get out of using these templates. So this is kind of a, you know, a score file. And let's just take a look at the part, one of the piccolo part, for instance. Again, it's not formatted in, in really any way. Uh, page size is a certain size and so on. So what do I want to do here? I'm just going to import the house style and more specifically, certain parts of the house style. Go to appearance import and I'm going to import, let's just say that, you know, you can import pretty much any one of the chamber ones, but I'm just going to say the quintet simply because it's the largest, <laughs> it's five, being five instruments, it's the largest one we have. Now you saw kind of what I did here. I unchecked most of the elements. I'm actually going to check most of them. The one thing I'm not going to check, of course, is document setup, because if I did that, I would get, you know, a very large staff size relative to the page and so on and so forth. So um, I want to keep my existing page size because I like it. I like my existing staff size, but I want to bring in all the other goodness of Notation Express, uh, sorry, Scoring Express. And let's say, okay, again, I'm importing Chamber Quintet, hit okay. And you can already see what happened. It changed the staff line thickness. It changed the uh, fonts automatically. It changed um, a lot of other things. Now, if I want to go even further, of course, I can reset note spacing on this file uh, to the Scoring Express uh, default. I would say appearance, reset note spacing, and let's see what happens there. It takes a second, because again, this is a pretty big file. And it also, uh, let's see what else. We, let's reset design, let's reset positioning. And you can start seeing as I click these things, and it's the reason it's not instantaneous is just because it's a massive file. Um, I get more and more closer to those defaults that I um, include in the Scoring Express template. And so you get a lot of stuff there. And then what, ha what happens here? Well, now you've got all the benefit of those nice, beautiful custom lines, those custom symbols, those custom settings. Um, but yet you still have maintained the document setup and the staff size. Uh, that you had before. And if you had your system breaks on, it would have respected those as well. So a lot is improved already. And of course, if I go to the part, now if I go to the part, you'll notice that, well, what is happening here? Obviously rests aren't turned on and all these things. This is because this is where you can import the Scoring Express part uh, house style into all the parts and get a lot of benefits. And here I do want to include the, the document uh, setup. So 
For those of you, some of you know how this works. For those of you that don't, this is really kind of crucial to working with parts. You go to parts, part appearance. This is the old multiple part appearance, multiple part appearance dialog in Sibelius 6, if you, if you go back that far. I'm gonna say all parts. And I'm just gonna say, I'm just ignore everything else here. Just say import house style on the house style tab. And here I wanna select that parts house style. And of course we have a parts house style for each of the three chamber, jazz, and theater. In the case of the theater, we have a couple parts style, one for the garden variety parts, one for keyboard, one for piano vocal. In this case, I wanna import the chamber parts. And the only three options I have are engraving rules, document setup, and note spacing rule. I wanna import all three of them. It's, gonna, it's not gonna change my score, it's gonna change the parts. And if I click OK, and you just start seeing, again, with all these parts, and it's a pretty quick process for, for what it does, it really starts putting everything into place uh, pretty nicely. Now, of course, this is a big file. Obviously, um, there's going to be some formatting, some page layout. But a lot of the settings are already there. These nice you know, bar number ranges are automatically there. All, everything is, is kind of set up. So look. It, is it a perfect looking part? Of course not, because it wasn't a perfect looking, you know, formatted part to begin with, but it takes a lot of that tedium of, of the settings um, out of the process. And really at this point, you're, you can focus straight away on cast, basically the casting, it gets you right to the casting off process, if you know what that means, basically figuring out where your page breaks are going to be and, and all that sort of stuff. And once you start kind of figuring that out, things will start popping into place uh, pretty quickly. So that is kind of how that works. Um, that's, that's a nice uh, feature. And you can, again, see this particular file is set up in such a way where there's a lot of duplicate parts and, and all that. And that's why I didn't want to go down the road of creating like the Scoring Express template file necessarily. Uh, one last thing, review of answering the question, how do I use this thing? You know, if, <laughs> if that wasn't immediately clear from the tutorial today, I think this will, will help a little bit more. The doc, uh, documentation will cover the the stuff that you that you've yep. spoken about this evening. Yeah, yep. uh, that's brilliant. I, that's, yep. that's what I, I want to ask. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, and there's Super. documentation. This is the documentation. It and also comes as a proper PDF file in your mm -hmm. um in your package as well. You can open it and put it on your iPad or or print it out if you like. Um, but if you haven't bought it, you can scroll through. It's all there. How it works. All the documentation is up publicly available on the website how the angled, uh, angled slash chord symbols uh, work as well, um, and some of the additional docs. So it's really, it, we try to document as, as, as really well as possible um, all this stuff. But you know, I know it, seems, it looks like a lot. The idea is to make it as simple as possible. And then if you really want to get into the, the nitty gritty, um, it's, it's there for you. So thanks for that. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Gordon. Thanks. It's good. I think it's a good question. Actually, a lot of people are probably under, wondering, like, wait a second, how do I use this thing? But really, the idea is that, you know, we're, we're trying to make it, it's it's still complicated music notation software, uh, and it, it won't solve your, your life problems, but um, it will hopefully make your scores look a little nicer. And hopefully for 60 bucks, that's, uh, uh, that's, that's a good trade off. All right, listen, everybody. Um, it's been fun as always. I really appreciate all, you, all your support, the great community. Thank you. Um, we will see you on the blog, on social media, on the podcast. Have a great rest of the day, right. even wherever you are. So long. Catch you later. Bye-bye.